In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to solve exponential equations by getting the bases equal to one another. So what we're going to do, is, if you can get these bases B to be the same, then that means the exponents or the powers are going to be equal to one another. So we're going to go through three examples and I'm going to show you some different techniques that you can use. So in this first example, when I look at one half and eight, what is a common base that comes to mind? Well, I'm thinking two because I can get one half to be two to the negative one power. And eight we can get to be two to the third power because two times two times two, three times is eight. Now here's where we have to use our rules of exponents. So when you have a power raised to another power, what do you do? Well, you multiply those exponents together. Here what we're gonna do when we multiply is we're gonna distribute. So let's go ahead and do that. So we get two to the negative one X is equal to two to the six X minus nine. We're just multiplying the three into the parentheses. Okay, so now we've got the bases to be the same. They're both base two. So that means in order for this to be an equation, the exponents also have to be equal to one another. This is called the one to one property of exponents. And so all we're gonna do now is we're gonna solve this equation. So Let's get the variables on one side, numbers on the other. So let's go ahead and subtract 6x from both sides. And that comes out to negative 7x is equal to negative 9. And if we divide both sides by negative 7, you can see that x is coming out to positive 9 sevenths. Now, if you want to check your answer, you can go ahead and put it back in for x. Simplify or use a calculator and make sure that both sides are equal to one another. Okay, if you feel like you're understanding how this works, see if you can try this one on your own and we'll go through it together. So for number two, when you look at the bases, what do you think would be a good base that we could get so that they're both at the same, the same base? Well, when I look at this, I'm thinking three. So when we look at a square root like this, this is really the index two, and this is like the power one. And if you remember from what you learned about rational exponents, when you write this as a rational exponent or a fractional exponent, the power goes in the numerator and the index or the root goes in the denominator. So the square root of three is really like three to the one half power. Now, if this was the cube root, it'd be the one third power. If it was the fourth root, it'd be the one fourth power. Now, keep in mind this two x, this exponent is still gonna be right there. 81 though, we can think of that as three to the fourth power because three times three times three times three, four times, comes out to 81, and this exponent is still there as well. Remember, when you have a power to a power, what do you do? You multiply the exponents together, so 1 half times 2x is just gonna give us 1x, or we could say x, and over here, power to power, we multiply, but because this is a binomial, I'm gonna distribute that four to both of those terms. So this is gonna come out to three to the negative 4x plus four. Okay, great, so now you can see we've got the bases are the same, they're both base three, so all we have to do is set the exponents or the powers equal to one another. So that's gonna come out to x equals negative four x plus four. All we have to do is solve this equation, so variables on one side, numbers on the other. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add four x to the right, and I'm gonna add four x to the left. So you can see we're getting five x is equal to four, and if, let me just go ahead and carry this over here. So 5x is equal to 4. We just want to solve for 1x, divide both sides by 5, and you can see that x is coming out to 4 fifths. Again, if you want to check your answer, you can take the 4 fifths, put it back in for x, and make sure that the left and the right sides match. Okay, before we do this last problem, and I want you to try it on your own if you can, I just wanted to mention that if you like my content and you want to support this channel, consider joining as a channel member. Uh, it really helps out the channel. And if you're interested in more math videos, check out my Algebra 1 and my Algebra 2 video courses for sale. I'll put a link in the description. So for this last example, what would you do to get the bases to be the same? Well, it looks like 7 might be a good choice. And the reason is, is this 7 here can be written as 7 to the one third power. Remember the cube root, that root or index goes in the denominator. This is like seven to the first power, the power goes in the numerator. So we're writing as a rational or a fractional exponent. And then over on the right side, this is really like seven to the negative two power. Remember seven squared is 49, seven times seven, seven twice, 
but the negative tells us to take the reciprocal and that's how we're getting 149 or 1 over 49. We also have this power still here, 2x plus 1. And remember, when we have a power to a power, what do we do? We multiply, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So we have 1 third times 4, which is 4 thirds minus 1 third x. And on the right side, we're going to distribute. Negative 2 times both of these terms gives us negative 4x minus 2. Okay, great. So now we have the bases are the same. So what we want to do is we want to set the exponents equal. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have 4 thirds minus 1 third x is equal to negative 4x minus 2. Now, sometimes students have a little bit of a challenge when they see fractions. They kind of freak out a little bit. And I'll share with you something that one of my teachers taught me a long time ago, and that's clearing the denominators. You try to clear the fractions by multiplying by the common denominator. In this case, it would be 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by 3, okay, the entire thing. And if I do that, you can see that this is going to come out to 4 minus 1x equals negative 12x minus 6. Okay, a little bit easier to work with now, right? So what we're going to do is let's just go ahead and carry this over here, give us a little bit more space. We've got 4 minus x equals negative 12x minus 6. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the variables on one side. So let's add 12x to both sides. That comes out to 4 plus 11x and equals negative 6. Now we want to get the numbers on the other side, so let's subtract 4. So that's coming out to 11x is equal to negative 10. And we just want to solve for 1x, so if we divide both sides by 11, you can see that x is coming out to negative 10 elevenths. So great job if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more examples when the bases are not the same, where you can't get the bases to be the same, go ahead and follow me over that video right there and we'll do some more practice solving exponential equations.